The head of the troubled state office of juvenile justice is out. Deputy Secretary of Youth Services Bill Summers has resigned. Now, under his watch, there have been riots and escapes at the Bridge City Center for Youth on the West Bank and at other facilities in the OJJ system. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Cherie Skipson. And I'm Katie Moore. That news comes just days after OJJ warned the state's teen prisons are full. OJJ Assistant Secretary Curtis Nelson was named as the interim replacement. And in response to the news, the head of families and friends of Louisiana's incarcerated children issued a statement saying, quote, this is an opportunity for the state to shift its approach from a punitive system towards its overdue promise of a therapeutic model. And that shift starts with its leadership. Well, this is all happening amid a seeming surge in youth violence. Now, we have followed juvenile crime closely across our area, but what can be done about it? As the court system is pushing for funding. A local hospital will now add its own program to help young offenders. And Meg Ferris is joining us now in the studio with the details on that. Meg, what's it all about? And nearly 70%, Katie and Cherise, of offenders can't read. But now doctors say there's another issue that is common among them. And local doctors are taking action in hopes of changing future criminal paths. There's no capacity in non-secure or secure placement. So again, uh, these programs that are run through the court and come through the court uh, become very important. With the state's juvenile lockups at full capacity, this week in city budget talks, Orleans Parish juvenile court judges told city leaders about funding programs that provide alternatives to detention. And that program through GROW, we have a 98% rate of young women who do not reoffend while in the program. And now there's more help for troubled youths. The Trauma and Grief Center at Children's Hospital was awarded new funding that brings the counseling from the hospital to inside the Juvenile Justice Intervention Center. It's aimed at helping troubled youths in a different way. Some of our studies have shown that just by focusing on grief in these settings can significantly reduce violent behavior. Dr. Julie Kaplow runs the hospital center and says more than three quarters of the youths have lost two or more loved ones to violence before the age of five. And in many cases, they saw it happen. And for many of these youth, this is the very first time that they're actually talking about this. She says along with acting out with violence, they can feel hopeless about the future without the loved ones. So they get involved in more risk-taking behavior and don't care if they live or die. Many times when kids are engaging in violent behavior, it is because they are either wanting to get revenge on other people who have harmed their loved one. Um, and sometimes it's because that's the only way they feel connected to the person who died. There have already been three group therapy sessions, and she's seeing the beginnings of change. We have definitely noticed um, a bonding that takes place when kids start to talk about their losses. Now, the Trauma and Grief Center at Children's Hospital also treats anyone from birth to 21 at the hospital. And the doctor says it's especially important with the holidays coming to let children talk and ask questions if are they sad from loss. But if they can't eat, sleep, and are engaging in risky or harmful behavior, it's time to talk to a professional. All right, thank you, Meg.